Hi Founders fans, Jason here. Today we're going to be talking about Nicholas Lowe. Now this is a follow up to a video I made two days ago about Nicholas's brother Isaac Lowe. And I'll remind you that Isaac was an avid rebel who participated in the first Continental Congress and signed the Continental Association, but after the declaration was signed, Isaac turned loyalist. Now his brother Nicholas, it was not as ardent about anything. In fact, he's he was part of what I like to call the Forgotten Third. It's a term I made up and I like to use it. When the revolution broke out, about a third of people in general supported the rebels and another third supported Great Britain. And then there's this Forgotten Third that didn't support anyone. Or it's probably better to say they decided to support whoever ended up winning. And Nicholas Lowe was one of these people. He, he was a merchant in New York City, and he said, let them sort it out. I'll be here when they're done. Um, now, this doesn't sound like a person who's a founder, of course, but after the war ends, the British evacuate New York, and the rebels come back in, and there's a little bit of a power vacuum left. And, and Lowe was a citizen people respected, and since there was so much change in power there was a little bit of a vacuum and and Nicholas Lowe was one of the men who stepped up to fill it. Now one of the first things he did really was he attended the New York State Ratification Convention for the United States Constitution. And I'll remind you that the Federalist Papers were written in New York and published in New York because New York was on the fence and it was necessary for New York to support the new government. And Nicholas Lowe went to that convention and he did support that new government. Now over the next few years he would serve in the New York State Assembly on several occasions but most importantly to the revolution he became the fine not a financer uh, he became he started doing the books and controlling the finances and accounts of Rufus King. Now Rufus King is a name you might recognize he was a signer of the United States Constitution and Lowe started doing his books right when the first government took over because Rufus King was a member of the inaugural United States Senate and he needed to run the country so he needed someone to do the books for him. Eventually King would go on to uh, uh, work as a minister to Great Britain. I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he's the one who took over for John Adams in Great Britain uh, in that difficult position. And while he was away, Nicholas Lowe kept his finances in order so that he could have a life when he returned home. King, I will make a video about. He eventually went on to run for president uh, as the last Federalist candidate, for really after the party was dead, but that's another video. Either way, Lowe served Rufus King for about 15 years. And then when he was done with that, he started uh, investing in land, in mostly in upstate New York. And what's interesting is that while most speculators would buy land and then send people out and just lease it out and figure out a town by yourself, Lowe actually went on location and would organize the town and say this is how it's going to be laid out and then he'd construct it and sell off the buildings and properties as he built them. Which is very, fairly unique among people developing on what was the frontier at that point. Uh, and now for me, especially living in upstate New York, it's I, I technically live in the military tract where that was but I am not far from this in fact my wife drives to different places my wife drives up to a town named Lowville all the time now people from the area will tell me it's pronounced Lowville and I have been unable to determine if I should have been calling them Isaac and Nicholas Low or Isaac and Nicholas Low this whole time it's spelled L-O-W and I will go with my interpretation until I hear differently. So please leave a comment. Let me know if I'm pronouncing it wrong. And like I said, if you're from Lowville, you will tell me it's wrong. Also, Watertown, which is a small city uh, right on the St. Lawrence on the border of New York and Canada. Uh, interestingly, Frank Sinatra had an album called Watertown about that particular s small city. Not even a town. <laughs> um, that's a little off topic, but this is part of the effect that Nicholas Lau left for us as a founder uh, of the United States. So, a little bit different today. Uh, he's a much less well-known 
uh, more obscure figure than I've usually been making these videos about, but I'm really interested in these people, so I thought you might be too. Uh, again, if you know how to pronounce the name correctly, leave a comment. If you uh, enjoyed this video, please hit like. I would really appreciate that. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Um, I'm wearing my Thomas Jefferson shirt. We are all Republicans. We are all Federalists. If you like this shirt, check out my shop. Uh, and feel free to support me on Patreon. I've just announced a bunch of new things on there. And you can become an, uh, not just a supporter, but a sponsor of these videos. And I would really appreciate your support, just like I appreciate you watching these videos. So thank you so much. It's going to be a short one today. And I look forward to talking to you tomorrow.